Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You may be seated, friend. Thank you, Brother Vail. That's not worthy of a little introduction like that, but I sure appreciate them fine words. I'd have to live a big life to live to that. And so I'm happy to be here tonight in Southern Pines, North Carolina. I always get that mixed up if it's North Carolina. This is actually Aberdeen. Okay. This is actually Aberdeen. Yeah. Aberdeen. Aberdeen. When I get that Southern Pines, it seems to me like we're going to be in South Carolina. But it's Southern Pines and North Carolina. I get it all mixed up. And I'm just glad to be here, old. And to have this time of fellowship with my precious friends, Brother Parker, Brother Lee Vail, all, all of them, and all those that are sojourning here, uh, waiting for the coming of the Lord. And I, I really didn't know Brother Parker as well as I wanted to. One day I was reading an article in a magazine, and I said, Thomas Parker, I want to know that name. And just a little while, oh, I'd say a day or so, Brother Lee Vale come in. So why do you know who that is? That's our friend up there. And so we tried to get him on the phone, and I wanted to thank him for a comment that he had passed in the magazine. And so then that's how we come to get connected for me to be here tonight to help him in this convention. So glad to be here, Brother Thomas. And to meet all these fine friends and everybody again, and to have a time of fellowship. But you can imagine how I feel to stand here tonight to speak a Bible message, and man like that sitting behind me. You <laughs> really I feel something maybe I better do like Dwight Moody. They said he did when he was in England. He was speaking one night before the Cockneys who really pronounced their words real right and Mr. Moody didn't have education, so he tried to read a scripture, and he mispronounced three or four words, and he went back and tried it again, and he mispronounced it worse than ever. So he just closed the Bible and looked up towards heaven and said, God help me, and he shook the country. <laughs> so that's, that's it. Just look to him, and that's what we have to do. And uh, the convention... I guess it's all been announced. It's going on up here at the tabernacle, the Bible tabernacle, as it's called. And I'm sure if you'll go up there, friends, you'll certainly hear something. I've read many articles, but Brother Thomas happens to be among one of the great writers, I think, of the day. His hold on the Word of God. And then I'm sure it'll do you good to go there. I may look a little butchered up tonight in the face and my eyes... I guess you've already heard that I was shooting a rifle about four weeks ago, and uh, my recreation was always fishing, hunting, or, or something and like that, the outdoors. I never did play golf or ball or horse racing or anything. I just loved the outdoors, and I loved it so well. While I was in Africa, I kind of fell in love with Roy Weatherby's rifles, but I never could think I could afford one of them, and so there was, some of my friends would have probably got me one if I'd have let them, but I couldn't, as I told Brother Thomas this afternoon, I couldn't think of letting some of my friends buy one of those expensive rifles for me when I know missionaries hasn't got shoes on their feet. I couldn't feel right with the rifle, so a friend of mine came, and I had an another rifle there that a man gave Billy Paul and he run the Weatherby Company in Indiana and he said uh, let me have it bored out for you and make a Weatherby rifle out of it well it happened to be it never bored it right and I put the shell in the fire about six tons of explosion right in my face and as high as those curtains this red fire the barrel went on the 50 yard line the stock went this way and the gun melted in my hands and I couldn't see here nothing for a few moments and when I could pull my hands open I could get my eyes open there's an eye on this side I could see blood shooting out like that and I held my hand up like this and this tooth is knocked off here with a piece of strap on one end sort of big ring around my face and 15 pieces just made a half moon right under my eye and went all the way to the back of the eyeball but never touched the sight and then, so 
when the doctor examined me, when he put me over there, he said, only thing I know, the good Lord must have been sitting there with his servant. You wouldn't even have a head and shoulders on for all that explosion. So these are all good days and good times for me. I'm, I'm glad to be here. So I feel by that that the Lord wasn't finished with me yet. And maybe he wants me to try to speak a little bit more for his people and Amen. to try to help. And I'm here to do all I can to make uh, life a little easier for you and try to help the best that I know how. So you will pray for me, I'm sure. And yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Brother Vail was just telling me that the amplifier here is the only got this a small mic. Can you hear back there all right? You can hear. That's good. So I never lost my sight or my hearing. I got a whistle tied down out here somewhere yet. <laughs> And this right eye has got stigmatism, and I suppose that's the way you pronounce it, it's nervous, shakes, but it'll be all right, it'll just be fine. So everything will be just fine and dandy. And uh, I know it was for some purpose. We know that our Lord is always true when He said it, He'd make everything work that way, so I'm just trusting Him to be that way. But, he has told me many things and let me bypass many troubles, but, you know, he can't let me bypass them all. We got to, we ministers have to suffer as well as you people there. The Lord sometimes speaks and lets us know how to bypass troubles and do things. But remember, we get right into those places too, or we have to suffer right along with the rest of them. And it's really more harder on us than it is on you, seems like. It just holds off a long time for us and doesn't answer all the time. So, but we're thankful that he always comes riding in on the wave, and so we're thankful for that. Everybody feel good? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like a convention, all right. Everybody right in tune. Pray now. And tonight, I drew a little context here from what might be called a text I want to read. And I've got some scriptures and little notes wrote down here, and I'd like to make a little Sunday school class out of it, like. And then I'd just like to ask, of course, use at the beginning, there's not too many here. I could probably, when the sick people's be prayed for, I can run a prayer line and catch them every one in one night. So uh, maybe I just thought I'd ask tonight and see how many were sure to be prayed for and kind of come to the convention and you won't prayer for your sick body and uh, would like to have us pray for you, would you just raise up your hand and say, I come with that intention? Well, that's wonderful. That's fine. See that the, the first night, usually the people kind of wait the last and it's kind of hard. Wonderful to see you here with faith in God that you believe that God will answer. He will. Amen. He hasn't failed. He just Amen. won't fail. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivereth him out of them all. So as long as we get deliverance, that's the main thing. And we get between straits sometimes, as Paul and those others who have gone on before us, the great saints and elected man of God. And we are, no, we can't ask to be immune from troubles, but... It always something behind it that God makes it work just right for all of us. I believe a few moments ago, I'm not mistaken, I see my good friend, Brother Sullivan, sitting down here too, all from down in Kentucky. Glad to see you, Brother Sullivan. And Brother Iverson, Florida, and all everywhere. How many here from out of town? Let's see your hands, my Well, say, is there anybody here from town? Let's see your hands. <laughs> From the city, from around the city. Oh, what do you know? About 12, 15 people, huh? That's a, a good representation from out of town there. That's right. That's usually what conventions draw. Well, my wife used to sing a little song for me. They'll come from the east and west. They'll come from the lands afar. To feast with our king, to dine as his guest. How blessed these pilgrims are, beholding his hallowed face. 
flow with love divine. Bless partakers of his grace as gems in his crown to shine. You know the song? Jesus is coming soon. Our trials will then be o'er. Oh, what if our Lord this moment should come for those who are free from sin? Then would it bring you joy, our sorrow, our deep despair? But when our Lord in glory comes, we'll meet him up in the air. That's our purpose of being here. I'm not a singer, friends. I, I couldn't sing. I, you know, I've always wanted to sing, brother. So I'm going to tell you all sometime you can hear me sing when I can sing. When you get up to heaven and it's all over and in your great mansions, I've always loved the woods so well and everything. Maybe I got a little cabin down in the corner of Glory Land somewhere. You walk out on your big mansion patio some morning or porch. Listen, way down there in the woods, you hear a voice coming up singing, It's amazing grace, how sweet the sound. You say, Brother Brandon made it. Hallelujah. <laughs> if he can take a wretch like me and save me, well, then they hope for all of us. You see, you say, Brother Brandon made it, because there he is still singing Amazing Grace. I always wanted to sing that. I can just hum it in my heart, but I hope someday I can really sing it. Let's turn to Ephesians, the sixth chapter. And here it is, almost time to let out. And we're just getting started. Ephesians, the sixth chapter. We'll begin with the tenth verse and read a portion of the word. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand the, in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, and having the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith, which ye shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer, supplications, and spirit, watching there with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. I would like to take a text from that, from putting on the whole armor of God. And I was thinking a while ago that this might be appropriate to kind of wedge in a little for the message for tomorrow morning and for the following days at the convention, because it's usually at a convention that these great men who are called for this teaching usually uh, gets uh, uh, the word out to the people. And so Paul here is speaking of a soldier dressing, going to war. A soldier getting himself in armor, preparing for a, a battle. And I kind of like the way that he places it. Preparation. You know, I believe it was Lincoln that said one time, in a time of peace, prepare for war. Or it might not have been he, but it so sounds like, it. seems to me rather it was he that made that statement. In time of peace, prepare for war. And that would be a good thing for us to think about. In time while everything is running smooth, you better get ready. Or Satan isn't going to let it run smooth very long. You're in a convention now, and everything will just pour along fine, but you're going to leave here in a few days, and you're going to meet the enemy. You mean, he might not even wait till you get ready to leave. Hallelujah. He might attack any time. He, he's wicked. 
ruthless. He just carries on whatever he can. Whatever he can say or do, he does it right now. He, so it's best to be dressed all the time. You might meet him out on the street. You might meet him in your in the car. It's hard to tell where you meet him. Or he'll meet you right in the seat there. And he'll right the pulpit here. Anywhere he just... He's just wicked and he doesn't care. Amen. So we want to be prepared for it. And this great teacher, St. Paul, was teaching the church how to put on the armor. And he was likely to a soldier getting ready for the great battle ahead. Now we find out about in nations, there is many times that Nations, no matter whether they're friendly or not friendly, each nation has its spies. Now, we have our spies all over the world. And every nation in the world has their spies here. Whether they're friendly or not friendly. They're kind of a little suspicious, you know. Now, England is one of our sister nations. But yet, we got spies in England. England's got spies here. We have them everywhere. Yep. So they make their rounds. and They're friendly, nice people. There's really nothing you can say against them. But they're just on the alert. Watch it. See what's going on. And watching for some new weapon that's going to be developed. And they'll slip right in and see how that weapon is. And then they'll send it to their own country and... And they'll prepare for a, a counterattack. Whether if we would use this weapon, while they could counterattack it to us, or if we should use their weapon, or they use their weapon on us, our spies. We'll build up uh, some weapon to combat the weapon that they're planning on using. Or some secret, a secret service, or some secret thing we are planning on doing. And they'll make ready because they got spies here for that purpose. To spy out and see what we're doing. We got spies there spying out, seeing what they're doing. Seem like we just can't really trust one another. It just, it just looks like there's something in human beings that just goes so far and that's all the farther it can go. I'm glad there's something we can put complete trust in, don't you? Amen. Something that we don't have to wonder Think about it. Just know that we can just rest like little children. I think that's the way we should be. Especially Christians. We should be like, in the beginning, you notice, man is trying to find that place. Because when he was first made in the image of God, he didn't have to shift for himself. And God taking care of him. But since he'd become a, an alien or a, a wanderer, then he has to shift for himself and he's suspicious of everything. He just, if you excuse the expression, it's kind of spooky. Everything looks a little leery. He's gone. He don't want to wait for it. Now, nations do these things to spy out and they're constantly, because that they have to do this, is because their old weapons that they used to use become obsolete. Now, what would we do with a bow and arrow? that they once used. Or what would we do with the old uh, weapons that they used in the First World War? The old Craig Jarvison rifle. Well, what would we do with the Springfield? That's been a pl replaced. The last war with the Grand. This war with an atomic missile in it. See, it's, it becomes obsolete. The old airplane that we used to, uh, air knocker that went across in the First World War, why, they used a... Uh, uh, three or four engine plane in this last war, and now it's just junk. It's no good. It's obsolete. Spend millions of dollars to make them up, and then, then throw them in a big molding pot and mold them out again because that the enemy, our spies reporting, has brought in news that they got a greater plane. Now we go by jet. Now they've got it so they can time it to a star and pull one hand. Leave her and the whole world goes into a cloud of dust. So it's just about the end of this thing. Amen. And Amen. There, there's hardly anything they know what to do now. All the old weapons have been changed and become wreckage. I was thinking the old 
a coal burner train that used to take come down through Jeffersonville there by the depot and they'd have great lines of, of guns and taking it over to Fort Knox where they'd been made in tanks. That old steam engine, that, there's not any of them on the tracks no more. They're all gone. And they're sitting around as relics. They used them in this last war, but now she's a diesel. In just a few days, she'll be an atomic-driven affair. So it's just all has to junk it and start over again. And, you know, in this warfare between nations, uh, there's a great warfare going on beyond that. And that's a warfare between God and Satan. Amen. A great warfare. And that was the first warfare and is still raging. But oh, I'm so glad it'll soon come to an end. Amen. And it'll all be over. Yes. Satan has his agents out everywhere. Amen. Watching, spying out yes. on God's people. Yes. God's move. Amen. The enemy is sitting everywhere watching to see what he can do. And God's got some out too. So we are thankful for that. Yes. Amen. And each nation equips its army with the best and the latest equipment that it can find. That's the reason our old equipment becomes obsolete. It's because that we find like Germany on the radar and, and different Things that we pick up from other nations and something that we invent ourselves. Now they got a man whirling around in space. They all holler about that, you know. We got a man in space. Oh, that's nothing. We Christians have had one in space for 2,000 years. Hollering about that. That's nothing new. That's old to us. We know that all along. Hallelujah. See, that's in how far ahead we are. But you don't realize. Yes, building great big roads and super things like that and trying to make the earth a better place and so forth. They don't realize that the meeks go to inheritance. So, uh, 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 they are, so Amen. Just, just see, God's got it all figured out for us. Yeah. That's the only thing we have to do is just hold on to Him and just go right on. See, that's yeah. all believing. That's Amen. all He asks us to do. He'll take us right through. So... We find out that these secret agents of the enemy uh, sets around. Each nation now will equip its man with the latest equipment, the very latest. And they study and they do everything to try to counteract the other fellow's weapon and to get a, a little more modern weapon, a little, a, something with a little more punch to it. From the bow and arrow to a musket, from a musket to a modern rifle, and from that to an atomic. They just keep building and keeps them busy all the time. And it's the nation's business. If they want to survive, they want to equip their soldiers with the best equipment that there is. Well, God, you know, He's infinite. Amen. See, He don't have to take anything better. He just got the best to begin with. So <laughs> can't improve on it. Amen. Nothing can be done about it. Amen. He just give us the best. Amen. That's his word. Amen. 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 That's right. That's his word. Amen. The best that can be given. Yes. God gives his people the very best. And that's what he chose for his children. The very, very best. I'm so glad of that. Amen. I see God, our Father, and the kingdom that we are delegates of, he's infinite. Now, these nations keep building and studying and working and probing in science and everything like that. But you see, God being infinite, therefore, He knows the end from the beginning. Amen. And before it ever happens, He knows how, when, and where. Amen. So we can rest assured that as long as we're in Him, everything's going just fine. Amen. No one even been scared about anything. Amen. There isn't anything that can bother us. Amen. So we're just resting peacefully like little children, Hallelujah. and nothing can harm us. No. So the infinite God, you see, that's the reason I believe His Word, don't you? Amen. Hallelujah. It's because that that Word is He. Yes. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word is with God, and the Word was God, Amen. and the Word made flesh. Amen. Now, so therefore, 
God knew that himself couldn't fail because he was over Satan. So he just gave himself. See? Amen. His word. So that's the defeat. Now, God cannot make a decision today and tomorrow come back and make a better decision. Amen. See? Because Amen. his first decision is perfect. Amen. He never has to change it. Amen. So therefore, we can rest upon whatever God says. That's the reason that I believe the Bible is God's Word. Amen. Now, the reason I believe that, that God has to judge the world with some standard. And if it's by a church, which one is it? Hallelujah. See, there's hundreds of them. And uh, the different churches and organizations, all right. But you can't. The Lutherans say, we have it. The Baptists say, no, we got it. And the Presbyterians say, we got it. And the Pentecostals say, no, this is it. And the Nazarenes say, no, this is it. You'd be confused. Amen. But you see, it's the Word. Amen. I, I just believe it, the Word. You just take it the way it's wrote and believe it. And it's no private interpretation, it says. It's just written there. And yeah. then if he's got the judge for a world with some standard, well, this he's watched over, so it's just the way it ought to be. So I just believe it like that. Amen. Just read it and say, yes, Lord. And I believe when we believe God, every time God says anything, we punctuate it with, Amen. 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 Whatever God says. He said, Jesus Christ is saying yesterday and forever. Now, Amen. somebody would say, well, in a way, uh-uh. Amen. 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 He said, repent, be baptized, and receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. He said, the just shall live by faith. Amen. Amen. And uh, he said, I'll come again. Amen. Amen. And whatever he says, the Holy Spirit inside of us just punctuated with Amen. Amen. Okay? And look for the next thing. Okay? Amen. Now, that's wonderful that we can have a faith like that. Yeah. Now, the reason I know it's right, because God said over in the book of Revelation, whosoever shall take one part out of this book Amen. or add one part to it. Amen. Oh, my, that must be what he's going to judge the world by then. Oh, he says, go to judge of the Christ. He is the Word. Amen. Take away from it. Ties it right back again. He is the Word. Amen. So, now, so we know that Word is true. Yes. And if you say you have Christ and don't believe this Word, there's something wrong with what you got. Amen. <laughs> so, Amen. The Word is right. It's got to be the Word. Amen. Now we find out that God gave His children the best. And therefore, He don't have to improve it. He just, um, he never changes. He hasn't changed one bit since the first time he gave for his children's protection. Now, when he knew there was war in heaven, he had to kick out Satan. Then he came down on the earth and fortified his children with his word. Now, I want to ask you something. Just think that now Eve did not, uh, while she's standing in this great fort, fortress of his word, now, Satan was on the outside trying to use some kind of a technique to get her out of there. For as long as she stayed behind the Word, Hallelujah. everything was fine. Amen. That's where we make a mistake. Yes, sir. We make a mistake when we get behind the Word. So I believe all Bible believers think of that way. Amen. We get them behind the Word, then we're in trouble. But as long as we keep the Word ahead of us, don't get ahead of the Word and let the Word be ahead of you. See, Amen. you just let it go first and you just live right behind it. It plows the ditch and you just walk in it. Amen. And that's the way it goes. Now, we find that in this great time of, of the beginning when God fortified His children in this fortress of His Word and, and told them, now that's, that was it. Now just think, Eve didn't just turn the whole thing down. She didn't say, well, God, I guess it's all together wrong. I don't believe a word of it. No. I believe half of it, Lord. No. Satan just misconstrued a little bitty fraction of it. Amen. Not all of it. Just a little bit of it. And because that she listened to that one little turn, it's called every funeral procession. Amen. Made every grave. Made every gray hair, every sick baby, every sin that was ever committed, because of just taking one little speck of God's Word and just misplacing it. Now, if the infinite God, a God full of love, to misconstrue His Word, 
just don't believe all of it, just part of it, would let all this happen because of just misbelieving a little bit of it, I believe we're going to have to take every bit of it Amen. back Amen. again or just misturning it. Say, the Bible says this, but honestly, it doesn't mean that. It does mean that. Amen. Amen. It means that just that Hallelujah. way. So we must keep it that way, the way he said it. But then, evil. Now we're going to find out, as soon as she had to get, Satan had to get her attention. I remember, he's in warfare with God and man and women is his children. So he's in warfare with Satan. So now remember, Satan comes down to use a tactic to try to counteract God's warfare, his protection. He's trying to find something that he can, a, a better weapon. So there is no better weapon that he could find, so then the only tactic he could use would be reasonings. Oh, when you stop to reason anything. The word says, but let me see that. It doesn't mean me. Five stripes, three were healed. That doesn't say. It does mean that. Too. Amen. Amen. Whosoever will. Amen. Well, I know the Holy Spirit was for them back in the early days, but it just reasons tell us that we, oh no, don't you do that. Whosoever will. Amen. To you and to your children and to them that's far off, even as many as the Lord our Amen. God shall call. No reasoning. Don't stop the reason. Just keep believing. Amen. Just believing what he said. Well, Brother Benham, I've sought the Holy Ghost for, for ten years. What's your reasoning about? If you carried out his plan, uh, I do not. then Amen. it's wrong. That I do not. It. He, he laid down the plan and just followed that plan. And it's got to come out right. Amen. If it isn't, then he told something wrong. See? So he can't tell us nothing wrong and still be God. So you see, you've got to believe it's his word or you don't believe him at all. So, so it's strange, isn't it? But it's really true. It really is the truth. Now we find that this great enemy of God thought, Now, as long as they will believe that word, I can never get to them. As long as that little family in Eden keeps behind that word, I can never touch them. Neither can he today. Amen. Hallelujah. He's still blocked off. Hallelujah. Right. But if I can use some real good a strategy and just reason, I give some human reasonings because she's human. And if I can just give human reasonings, then uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll win the battle. Satan and his angels. But then Eve gave away. So therefore... We know our enemy by his attacks. Yes. Yes. Amen. Maybe you didn't get it just right. Well, I said it. We know our enemy when anyone, any spirit, any person tries to disagree with God's word. Amen. Remember, Amen. that's your enemy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's Amen. your enemy. Amen. We know his old attack. Yes. That's the one he broke the human race down, and that's the way he breaks them down yet today. Amen. And Amen. that's the way he gets you up. Away from God is to disbelieve His Word. Amen. And the only way that you can ever stay in fellowship with God and talk to Him in the cool of the evening is stay fortified in the Word. Amen. Amen. Let the curtain of God's Word drop all around you. Yes. And you be a drop right in the middle of it. Amen. That's right. Then you're Amen. fortified. Lord. Now, in order to do this, He has to make it very appealing. Reasoning. And that's the way Satan does. He's good at the job. Yes. And he's a good adversary. And he makes it appealing. He had to make it appealing to you. He said, now look, uh, uh, dear, uh, you know, you don't know what's right and wrong. And uh, you, you must remember that it's, this fruit is pleasant to the eye. It, it, it'll make one wise. And all oh, oh, that isn't a good bait. Just get your Ph.D. or L.L. Double L. Q. S. T. D. or something like that. You'll be wise. Yes. Remember, no, that isn't what is it. It's faith. Amen. God that does it. You might have enough degrees to plaster that wall with and still not know God. Amen. You know God by faith. Amen. Nothing else. Amen. How about faith what? Faith in His Word. 
That's the only way he recognizes faith. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing the Word of God. That's how it comes, by hearing the Word of God. Now, Satan made it appealing. He still makes it appealing. Now, I'm not belittling anything. I hope you don't get me like that. I, I, if I do, I don't mean it that way. But Satan tries to make theology and, and education an appeal. Yeah. Well, we've been trying to educate the world for 2,000 years and getting worse off than ever was. Amen. You can't bring people to Christ by education. No. By denomination. No. They try to make it um, pretty. Yeah. Sin is beautiful. Certainly, it's pretty. Now, if you take in the Bible, we find out, I was speaking here a few nights ago somewhere, upon the subject of Noah in his days. Take Genesis 6. When the sons of God saw the daughters of man. And once I was studying a history, and I was listening to uh, what the historian was giving his, or no, I beg your pardon, as a commentary, on uh, what he thought the... Uh, the sons of God was. He said it was fallen angels that pressed themselves into human flesh and seen women and how appealing it women was and these sons of God become flesh. If you take it that way, I thought, my precious brother, you're more smarter than I, but if you do that, you make the devil a creator then. So the devil cannot create. He just perverts what God's created. There's only one creation, that's God. One creator. A wrong is a right perverted. A lie is a truth misused. See? Yeah. Adultery is a right act misused. See, All wrong is a right made uh, perverted. And that's all Satan can do. He just pervert what God's already done. See, A perversion. All right. Now we find that many times Satan makes it so, uh, so appealing that you'll be more popular. Yeah. Now that's what he did to Eve. Amen. Why? Smart, rich. Today's made so appealing to people who want to put millions of dollars in buildings. Yeah. And then preaching the coming of the Lord is at hand. Yeah. The churches are building greater auditoriums and, and buying up more land and, and everything. And then preaching the coming of the Lord is at hand. And missionaries on the field trying to get the word to the poor people that hadn't heard it one time. And that's the suffer part. See? Don't look right to me. Amen. But Satan tries to make it appealing. He fixes the churches, makes it an intellectual church, fine intelligence. Uh, live close to a, to a certain organization. It's fine, wonderful people, I suppose, and a man. But no man sitting out trying to wait to be prayed for him because this minister didn't believe in prayer for the sick. I wasn't at the place at the time. The old man is waiting. Storm and blowing, and because the old fellow was kind of looked like a tramp, poor old fellow didn't have much shoes on his feet, his old coat was all ragged and torn. And, but this minister did it when he let him come on the porch, get out of the rain. And I just wondered, and when we get up to heaven, if it's just going to be a special little place for the intellectual. No! And the poor and everything's somewhere else. Now, I'm afraid it's going to be a lot of disappointment to judge hey. <laughs> Because, you know, Paul said over in Hebrews 11 chapter, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, yeah. was destitute and afflicted. Look at Elijah in his cave and how the good see him come to our door today with his beards all out on his face, his bald head shining, a piece of sheepskin draped around him. We'd probably run him out of the yard, some of our intellectual brethren. That's right. But you don't know what's beaten beneath that little old skin there. The Holy Spirit may be tabernacle there. See? We must never do that. We must be brother. Treat a man. No matter if he's in wrong, still treat him nice. Be nice to him. If you haven't got that spirit, then he's something wrong. Jesus was nice to those who were ugly to him. See? We must be Christians, full of love, ready to help. Any race, color, creed, anywhere, anytime. See? We must be that way. That's Christians. That's the way Christ would have it. And to be a Christian is to be Christ-like. Now, Satan making everything so appealing, oh, and setting people aside, and you must believe this creed, and that's all you have to do, and you must say this uh, 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 prayer and cut out things and so forth. It looks like, and the people continue on living. They still gamble, smoke, paint, women wear immoral clothes, Amen. and... Uh, 
And they go to shows, dances, and play cards, just like they always did. See, but yet they belong to a great high intellectual group of people. See, Satan makes it real appealing. But that's not it. Did you notice uh, Cain's sacrifice? How appealing it looked, beautiful, the fruits of the field and the flowers. But Abel's wasn't appealing, pulling a little old lamb with a piece of, I don't guess they had hemp in those days, might have been a grapevine wrapped around his neck and tuck him up there and chopped his little throat with a rock until he bled to death. It wasn't very appealing, but it was righteousness <laughs> answering for sin. But God just brings his word more positive all the time. He don't have to uh, refortify it and bring something else up. He just makes his word more real all the time. And the Bible said when the, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God raises a standard against it. See? Now what is then if the enemy comes in like a flood and God's fortification to his people to fortify them is the Word of God, so he just raises the Word, a standard against him. Amen. Now he's raised it three times. Did you know that? God's always in threes. Don't. That's God's perfect number. Like God, the very essence of love, Spirit covers all the solar system from eternity, if there was such a way, to eternity. All love, all power, real power. Now that love, there's not philio, uh, the Greek word puts it in love, but fellowship love, but it's a gospel, godly love. And he's the fountain of all of that. And now, when... All that he anointed prophets, sexual born man, but it wouldn't work. Now, one time then, God became man, and Jesus was that man, and he was the express image of the Father, see? In other words, all this great purity of love, great purity of power, all this great thing was manifested in him. Now, therefore, he went down to the grave and died for us. For our sanctification and justification, and then brings back the Holy Spirit, see, for us. Now, therefore, we are the justified. Christ was the sanctification of God. We are the justification. Christ the sanctification, and the Father, head, see? Just like the Word in the beginning was spoken to us in the Garden of Eden, spoken Word. And the second time, it was made flesh and dwelt among us. And the third time, it become part of us in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. God, coming into the man, first spoke the word. The enemy tore it down. Then the word was made flesh. He was crucified. But now, amen. There's a difference in the word. The word is become the church, and the church is the word. God. Amen. All that God was, He poured into Christ. All Christ was poured into the church. Amen. The Holy Ghost. Now oh, the enemy's got something. See, then he isn't fighting something back here. Many people just taking the letter. The letter killeth. The Spirit giveth life. See? See? And they take these creeds and so forth, still kill it. But when you are taking the Spirit, that's God Himself. Amen. How do you know it's God? Because He's taking the Word and manifesting it. See? That is God Himself. Oh my. Oh, my. Yes, sir. Oh my. I think of back in the days of Noah, Jesus compared it with today, as it was in the days of Noah. Genesis 6. I hit that scripture again right here. Do you notice when the sons of God, which was the sons of Seth, that come from Adam, and from Adam was God, son of God. Son of Seth, and then the other side come from Cain, which was believing Satan's lie. Sons of Satan. Now, when the Canaanite women, right at the end time before the destruction, they were very beautiful. Have you noticed the difference in the looks of women, some of you older men and women, for the last few years? I was reading the other day with Pearl White. Many of you old timers remember one of the most beautiful women the nation had. And when Scott Jackson stabbed her to death, her silent lover, secret lover, rather, and her picture, why she wouldn't stand on the street with anything that looks pretty today. But you see, we're coming closer to the end. Women are disguising themselves in a, a, a dress that makes themselves. Amen. 
That is Canaanite. Amen. I better stop right there and move over here now, see? Or I said I want to sit in my hand. All right. Satan has his intellectual giants. You remember they said there were giants in the land in them days. Giants, he still has them. Intellectual giants. Oh my. See? In them days when Noah spoke about there's coming a flood. See, they didn't believe that, yet they were religious, but they, it didn't stand up to their specification of science. How did it put rain down there when there's no rain up there? Prove of the science there's no rain up there. Like that Russian uh, fellow the other day in that orbit said it. He flew all around over there 17 times around the world. He didn't see no God, no Holy Spirit, no angels. Yeah. Poor ignorant man. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's the same thing. There's science. It's just they... they they get so scientific, they get dumb. See? Yeah. Uh, or, or, excuse me, I wouldn't have said that. I, I mean, they just overlook the real things, you see. Now, all right. But today, Satan's got his intellectual giants. They can explain every bit of it away. Yeah. No such stuff. Ah, there's divine healing. Ah, mental. See? The Spirit of the Lord, the, the Bible said the Word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Yeah. Sharper than a two-edged sword, cutting to the bar of the bone, and, the, and even a, a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Amen. That's the Spirit of God. When Jesus stood and perceived what they were thinking about, when He was, he was the Word. Amen. When Philip came to Him and, and brought Nathaniel with Him, He said, Behold, the Israelite knew there's no guile. He said, Rabbi. When did you ever see me? He said, before Philip called you, when you were under the tree, I saw you. Hmm. What was that? That was the word. The word sharper. Here's her. When the woman at the well come and said, um, uh, when she asked for a drink, she said, well, it's not customary, this segregation here. We, uh, you uh, are Jews and we are Samaritan. But he said, if you knew who you were talking to, you'd ask me for a drink. And the conversation went on until he found that Word begin to find its place. Say, go get your husband and come here. She said, I don't have any husband. Said, you said the truth. You've had five, and the one you're living with now is not yours. She said, Sir, I perceive that thou art the anointed one, the Christ. I perceive that you are a prophet. She said, and we know when the anointed one comes is going to be the word. He'll tell us these things. He said, I'm he that speaks with you. That was a word. All that word, mine. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. Now, see, the word don't have to be scientifically proved as long as it's a word. If it can be scientifically proved, then chances are it isn't the word. You say if it isn't scientifically proved, it isn't the truth. Then if you got a mind, you believe you got a mind, then scientifically proved you got one. Do you love? How many loves? Oh, I wonder if I could buy something down at the drugstore. I need a whole lot of it. Yes. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, self, meekness, gentleness, patience, and faith. Those things are, cannot be proved scientifically, and they're the only lasting things that we have. Right? Well, not a thing lasting but that. And it's not scientifically proven. All right. Now, but today, in those times, they had those great giants... And today they got those great intellectual giants in the land too. Right. And I hate to say this. If, if there's one here, I hope it don't hurt you. But Satan spies. There are intellectual giants come around to prove that all this shouting and saying amen and going to the altar and breaking up the cause of your sins, that all that's just emotion. See, that's a scientific uh, giant. That's the intellectual giant. There's no such a thing. Walk up dry eyed and no, just say, Well, I'll join this church and uh, oh my. Well, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Satan does too. Amen. No sign he's saved. It takes more than that, it takes a new birth. That's right. That's right. So it takes the word, it takes a new birth. Not just saying that, it takes something that happens in here. Amen. It makes you different. And how glad we are tonight that we got it. Amen. How many is glad you got a new bird? Amen. Oh, I'm so happy. Let's take a little step. I say a lot of things, just like any other man, you know, I get all mixed up and everything. But once in a while, the Lord gives me something, and 
I, I, well, I, I like it real good. Amen. But, and, uh, you know, reading, every time I read his word, I always that because that's perfect. But sometimes he lets me say something. You know, it sounds real good to me. And he let me say something the other day. It just helped me so good. Oh, my. It sounds almost profound, but it's not uh, irreligious to say, or not right to say it. I'll tell you what it was. I was thinking about our guarantee. How do we know this? So many different things. How do we know you're right? So many religions in the world and things. Look, one time Israel was way down in Egypt. And as God's people, they'd been down there for hundreds of years. And there were slaves, drove around anyway. And the enemy would come out and basket full of old molded bread and pitch it out. They had to eat it. Die. And their young daughters was ravished. Nothing they could do about it. Nothing. Wanted to kill their sons. They just killed them. That's all. What a horrible thing it was. So... Coming down out of the wilderness come a prophet with a pillar of fire instead of fire. He was coming to bring them a message that there's a land that God has for you. And they listened to this prophet. Out of Egypt they went by the hand of God. They came to a place called Kadesh Barnea. Kadesh Barnea was a judgment seat. A great judgment seat one time in the world, I'm told. And there they had a one among them by a great warrior by the name of Joshua. I believe it means Jehovah Savior. Jehovah, Savior. Joshua. This great warrior, you know what he did? He wanted to show the children that that seat and them had ever been over there. They didn't really know that land was there. They just believed it. That's it. That's it. Just what this prophet brought them the word of the Lord. Of course, the word comes by the prophets. You see? So then they, so they come, and the word of the Lord came to this prophet, and he brought it to him and said, "There's a land formed with milk and honey, where you can have your own farms, raise your children, and feed them, and live in peace." So when Joshua got close there at the judgment, great Kadesh Barnea, and we all know the story. That's where Israel had her judgment too. So then Joshua crossed over Jordan. Went over into the promised land and come back with the evidence that the land was real. He had grapes. He had grapes that they could taste that the land was real. You could reach and taste the, the grapes while they're so big that two men packed a bunch of them on their shoulders. Oh, he said the land is real. So the people crossed over. They made their homes. They had their own nation. They lived in peace. God's hand was up on them and blessed them and give them mighty man and the thing. But after a while, when they get old, they finally come down and die. And they die. And the first thing you know, the hillsides begin to be covered with graves, tombs of the righteous man, the prophets and, and the sages and kings and, and righteous men. So then another great warrior came down. Oh, he was the king of all of them. It's called, the Frenchman calls him Jesus. <laughs> Jesus the warrior. <laughs> Jehovah. And he came down, and he loved them, but he said, you know, you have to get old and die, but there is life after death. Amen. Life after death. For in my Father's house is many mentions. If it wasn't so, I would have told you. See, what's he doing? Telling us old people that there is a land, after we get through here, there's another land. Amen. Not only was a pillar of fire falling, he was a pillar of fire. Amen. He was. The angel of the covenant. So here he was. And he said, after a man is finished here and you've lived your time out, this is seed time, but there is a land beyond this that a man lives. He came to his Kadesh Barnea. It's called Calvary. There not only was he judged, but he judged for you and I. He took the sins of Adam. And there he stood the judgment crossed over the river of Jordan of death, but on the third day he come back. Amen. What was he? Bringing the evidence. Amen. Like Joshua. He brought the evidence that the land's real and a man lives after death. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man lives after he dies. Job said in Job 14, if a man dies, can he live again? Or shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change comes. I know my Redeemer liveth, being a prophet. Hundreds of years before, when Elihu talked to him and, and the Spirit of God come upon this prophet, broke out in boils and in a terrible shape, he lost everything he had but his life. And he was sitting there and when the Spirit come upon him, he looked 
down through the stream of time for 4,000 years. And he saw the coming of the Lord. He said, I know my Redeemer liveth. Amen. At the last days, he'll stand on the earth. Amen. Though the skin worms destroys this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. For so I'll see for myself. Mine eyes shall behold and not another. And here he was. Crossed over Jordan after he stood the judgment for the world. And crossed over Jordan and come back. Some of them said, it's a spirit. He said, handle me. Does the spirit have bones and flesh like I got? And by the way, he says, have you got something to eat? <laughs> yes. And they give him fish and bread. And he eat it. He said, my spirit don't eat like this. Amen. But he said, children, you go out here and be baptized in my name now. I want you to confess your sins. And be buried. And you wait up there at the city of Jerusalem, and I'm going to give you the earnest of that. Hallelujah. All right. I'm going to give you the earnest of your salvation. And you know what the earnest is? It's a down payment. It's, it's, some, it's just a little a bit of the, the real. And now I'll give you the earnest of it. And then they waited until the day that it came, and they received the earnest of their salvation. Now, Think of it, friends. There's no more. We're on our road where to a promised land. Journey. With what? The evidence. Our Joshua has come back. Glory. And we have the evidence. For once we were in sin and trespasses, but we died to the things of the world. And we are buried in Him and raised with Him in His resurrection. Amen. And now we're up above them things. Pass from death Amen. unto life. Amen. The evidence. How do you know He lived? Well, I'm living above that. I'm already raised up from that. Done tasted the first fruits of the resurrection. That's it. That's what I'm talking about. Now, yes, sir. The spies come in. These intellectual spies, they spy out, and they find where something starts here, and they turn these guns in on it and make all the women go to dressing evil. Make all the men start Amen. hating and lying. Oh, yeah. even they pour it on them, you see. Well, they're real giants. But you know, that's too much for the poor, humble children of God. Yes, that's right. You know, when these people creep in, leading them away. You know, Jude said over in the book of Jude, he said they creep in, slip in. Man of all times was foreordained to this condemnation. Yeah. You don't believe it? What about that? Yeah. Yeah. Foreordained to this condemnation. What? Come in, these intellectual giants. Coming in, creeping in, turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. You see? Amen. Turning away the faith of the people. Amen. Oh, my. Amen. What do they do? What do they do when they come in? They try to cause you. They're Satan's spot. I'm telling you the days of miracles is past. There's no such a thing as the Holy Spirit. Oh, they come too late for that. Amen. We know better. Amen. <laughs> yes. Bless your little hearts. We know better. Amen. Yes, sir. But what do they do? They're trying to cause you, just like Satan did, to lose your faith in the Word. They're trying to say the days of miracles is past. That's just mental work up. There's nothing to it. And all these things, sure. God explain all the glory away, all the good away. Oh, there's no such a thing as divine healing. Uh, uh, God don't mean it. Listen, brother, I'll show you and you can show me where God promised it to the church. And what I'm wanting you to do, show me where he took it away from. Amen. Oh, no. uh, you don't do that. No. If anything else, he'd add a little more to it. So you, you don't take it away, he just puts more to it like he did his word. You said his word, that's it. That he, if the Old Testament, the Old Covenant... The old atonement had healing in it. How much is this better one? Amen. Or got more than healing. <laughs> got healing soul, body, mind, spirit, everything. Amen. So it's got eternal life in it. Amen. Sure it has, because it's the life of God. Made manifest in His Word by believing it. Now, but they creep in. All right. I am trying to spoil your faith. They just try to take it away. See? By their polish. Seminary reasonings, you know, they come in and reason. Now, looky here. Isn't it reason now? 
Could you just imagine in the days of Jesus they'd do the same thing? They'd come and say, now, isn't it reasonable? I can imagine, and I've always tried to dramatize thinking of, of Philip when he come with Nathaniel, and uh, Nathaniel said, now, let's reason, Philip. Now, if you know if the Messiah would come, he would come right down the corners of heaven, and would, you know what he would do? He would walk right down upon the temple yard where Moses dedicated. That was Moses' time. That's right. And he'd be up there in campus as our high priest would know all about it. See? That's only a reason. But how did he come? Not walking down the corners of heaven, but up the muddy bank of the Jordan. <laughs> Not to create this, but a, a fuzzy looking preacher come out there, the piece of sheepskin wrapped around him, but just a blasting out them organizations of that day, tearing to pieces and said, You generation of snakes in the grass. Who's you to like Amen. Not a different, but just exactly the way he said he would come. But they just overread it. You see that? They're intellectual giants that have been reading to them, you see? Yeah. You must just let God read it to you. The Holy Spirit wrote the word, so the Holy Spirit interprets the word. Amen. Now, all right. They tried in their days to tempt Noah. Not to believe the word of God. Amen. I can see Noah going in that ark. You know, he preached. He said, there's coming a rain. That's all there is to it. It's coming down. The giant said, oh, my. Pay no attention to that old fogey. Well, he's off of his mind, see? But he went ahead and 120 years, built this ark. And I can just imagine seeing after God said, all right, Noah. I've heard the last jar out of them I'm going to have. Uh, right. One up in the ark. And Noah looked going in there, and there went the lions, the leopards, two by two. Now you hear all the people say, Go on up there, you holy roller with your stinking yeah. animals, you see? <laughs> all right, go on up there with all the most stinking beast if you want to. But you know, he didn't stay with the stinking beast. He just kept on climbing until he got up the top. Uh, then God shut the door. And then you know what? Noah had a trial of his faith. Yes, he did. Sure. See? Because you know, he went in there on the 17th of February. But you know what? It didn't rain for seven days. Amen. The first day passed. I imagine some of the borderline believers come up and say, Well, you know, the old man could have been right. You know, it might be there might be something up there we can't even find. It. Maybe science didn't look high enough. So we about we both to stand around just hang around the meeting a while and see what takes place. Yeah. <laughs> oh my. It hasn't changed. Oh, amen. Amen. They just want to find one mistake. Amen. And it sure looked like they had it. Because the first day they come and said, Well, we get up there. If it is, we'll call Papa Noah and tell him to come on down, let a ladder down, and pick us up. So all of them come around the borderline. Believers, the rest of them went on jarring and laughing. Those others kind of hung around and listened to Noah once in a while. said, It might be so, so we'll stand around. Even if the door is closed, we can go in. Noah's good heart, and he'll let us in. But you know, God closed the door. Amen. Noah had nothing to do with it. And then, the first thing you know, the first day Noah said, all of you get ready now. All you children, get ready now. You go to hear a clap of something, and it's going to be something you know nothing about. Never heard such a noise. It's going to be worse than the black. And it's going to come out of the skies and break darkness. I saw it in the vision. And water's going to pour out there like fountains. First day the sun come up and said, hey. <laughs> Ten o'clock, twelve o'clock, three o'clock, five o'clock, no rain. Noah thought, wait a minute. All of them said, ah, oh, it wasn't that good. Well, let's try another day. Second day, it'll be here in the morning. It's a little late. That's all right. It'll be here. And the next morning, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, no rain. Five days passed, six days passed. He had to sweat it out. <laughs> That's right. We have to sweat it out, too. Amen. But if God said anything, stay with it. Amen. If by stripes we are healed. Amen. And we take his word, sweat it out. Amen. Come on. Come on. I promise the Holy Ghost. Be like old Buddy Robinson said, Lord, if you don't give me the Holy Ghost when you come back, you'll find a pile of bones laying right here. Amen. I don't sweat it out. Stay there. God said so. <laughs> Abraham sweated it out for 25 years for that baby. But it got there. Amen. A difference just sort of rides. That's all that's necessary. That's right. He promised us to stay with it. And after seven days, then that morning he got up and said, Uh-oh, there it is. Oh, what a thing. My, could you imagine? He knew that the promise was close. Why? He could feel that morning before anything taking place, he could hear way in a distance a roar. That wind that opened the top, maybe 20 foot across or whatever it was, a big wind up there. You know that hot parched ground, that hot sun? That, you know when you get a real dry spell for a long time, then in the distance you can feel that cool wind coming in from that rain? Hallelujah. He knew it was coming. That's what's the matter with the world today. 
You know, the people look around and say, oh, the Tommy bomb. We're going to build a fallout shelter. We're going to do this. Nonsense. Amen. Nonsense. Amen. What's you so scared about? Amen. No, that, I, that just feels like what he told me. Huh. That, that's the thing now. Amen. <laughs> this feels just like what he told me. Amen. That's Amen. It changed me. And I believe that the coming of the Lord is so close we just feel the breeze off of it. Amen. That's what's scaring the Amen. people and making the church get ready to, for the rapture to be caught up. Amen. Sure, we're at the end now. That's sure. Amen. So, the first thing you know, the rains begin to fall and the floods begin to rise. The streets got full of water a day after day after day. And finally, they went 20 feet over the highest mountain and they perished in the water, all the unbelievers. But Noah floated right through it. Amen. Amen. Yes. Oh, believe God's word, no matter how unscientific it is, believe it. Because if it can be proved, that it can no more be faith. You've got to believe it when it can't be proved. You've you got to believe it. Cause you lose faith in their word, or in God's word. But they want to take their intellectual part and do it. All right, they say, this is it. We, the Bible says that we don't wrestle with uh, toads, <laughs> flesh and blood, but we wrestle against spiritual power. Amen. Now, if you'd only realize it, as said a while ago, we are risen with him now. You're not going to die, you're already dead. Amen. Amen. But our spirit is alive in him. So we're not wrestling against natural, scientific things. We're wrestling against spiritual power. Amen. You know, wrestlers, they practice on breaking toe holes and things, but you don't break these toe holes. Now, <laughs> could you imagine a wrestler come out now, my, with his fingernails polished, trunks on with all kinds of gold beads around it? Looks like a pretty good wrestler. But if that's only intellectual, if he hasn't got a hidden strength there, that when his enemy gets a toe hold on him, that he can pull him out of it. Hallelujah. Amen. His intellectual beads around him and everything won't make much difference. <laughs> so all our intellectual means nothing if there is a hidden power of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. To break the hold of the devil. Amen. We're wrestling, not. we're wrestling not with fine dressed intellectual psychology. But we're wrestling with the power and the promise of God which can break any hold on any devil at any time. Jesus our Lord proved it. When he was Emmanuel, God himself made flesh among us. And when he met Satan to show that Satan could be defeated by the word, every time Satan would come to him, he said, it's written. Amen. It's written. Oh, how I would like to take time here on some note I got wrote here on the things that he said. How many times he broke Satan's power with it's written. Amen. Oh, my. Show him that that fortified person behind the word of God can scream out, it's written. Turn loose. Hallelujah. Turn loose, Satan. Amen. For it is written, if you're standing behind the word, if you abide in me and my words and you ask what you will. Amen. Right. Oh, be wrong, that's got to be right. Amen. Yes, we need that hidden strength like Samson had. I've seen the intellectual picture of Samson. Somebody draw he had shoulders on us. I don't believe the man could have stood on the platform. I've never seen such shoulders. That'd be no mystery how he could pick up a line and tear him apart. Or pick up the gates and walk up on the hill with it. Or something like that. Wouldn't be no mystery a man that size. But he was a little bitty curly-headed shrimp about like that. Mama's little boy, little curls hanging down. But where that thing was, they couldn't understand where that... How you could take a jawbone of a mule and up on them helmets about an inch and a half thick, and that old jawbone would have broke the first leg. An old powder dry jawbone. But he just knocked those flesh in right and left with it. Amen. What was it? It was a hidden power. Amen. Amen. I didn't know where it was at. See? That's what's the church today. We got a hidden power. Hallelujah. Oh my. Something in 45. Uh, what is it? It's a word, the manifestation yeah. of God's grace with his people. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Yes. If you don't have the hidden power, today we study in schools. We send our children to Bible schools. That's all right. Nothing against it. Not a thing. But that's not what counts. You know, Peter that night, oh, how he had, when the high priest come up, his servant, he pulled out his sword he could do. He pulled out his sword and chopped his ear off. Yeah, he had a lot of, of strength in his arms. But when he comes, the spiritual courage, he didn't have it. Yes, amen. He denied the Lord's word because Christ was God's word made amen. manifest. So he denied it. Amen. Oh, how I'd like to linger on that a few minutes. How did that word 
He said, if I do not the works of my Father, then don't believe me. Amen. But if I do the works of my Father, then believe the works. Amen. He said, you hypocrites, you can see the signs in the skies about you know, rain coming and so forth. But said, the signs of the time you can't discern. For you, if you'd have known me, you'd have known my day. Amen. You find it? And Peter seen all that and heard all that. And with an arm that could cut off that priestess servant. He must have been a real uh, swordsman because he was a servant to the priest. And he was a guard that came out there and could use his spear. But Satan was so, or, or Peter was so much better with the spear or with his sword than he was with the spear. He chopped his ears off. But when he come to real down inside of him, courage, he didn't have it. No, he didn't have it. When he had seen that word, now I'm going to get religious. Amen. When he had seen that word made manifest, and know that that was the day for it to be there, and see it proved exactly what God said it would do, and then with all of his intellectual strength, all of his physical being, that's the way it is today. Man who just woke up and put their name on a book, those who shake hands with a minister, and when it comes to Standing in the office and the boss passes a drink, they'll take it. Amen. They're afraid of their job. It comes to uh, paying your tithes into your Amen. church. You're afraid to do it. Amen. Because you're afraid you're starved to death and oh, God made the promise of you to take it. Amen. All these things that when you come to the church and the Holy Spirit falls in amongst the people and something in your heart tells you, this is it. That's the word. When you see the baptism and everything else brought out in the word, you're afraid to take it. What's the matter? You're lacking courage. Amen. Spiritual courage. Amen. So stand up. So he didn't have it. He could do, he could say, I belong to so and so, I'll give you to understand. But that wasn't what it was. But when he seen the word manifest, and then denied it. Oh, what a horrible thing that was. But brother, after Pentecost, he went up and put on the whole armor of God. <laughs> He sure had courage in. Uh, Look right. at that same guy. Yes. A believer on Christ. Followed him hour by hour. But he only had seen the word by letter. Amen. He'd only seen it manifested. But now it was in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of God's fiery word was burning in his own flesh. Hallelujah. How was it? God in you. Amen. Amen. Christ, the hope of Amen. glory, made manifest in a man in church. Hallelujah. God knew what he was doing. All right. Yes, sir. It wasn't no more trusted this or that or other. It was God himself. Amen. Amen. Then he stood up there and said, Be man of Israel, you that dwell in Judea. Hear my voice. These are not drunk as you suppose. Amen. This is that which is spoken over the prophet Joel. It will come to pass in the last days, so if God, I'll pour out my spirit. about that he had something. Why was it? He had the whole armor of God on him. Not so much as the high priest dress, but he had something inside of him. The armor of God comes inside. The spiritual hidden power of God that the intellectual eye doesn't see at all. Jesus never did say did you see it. Uh, did you believe <laughs> Oh, wow. I've often made a little rude mistake. Maybe uh, I didn't mean to do it, but maybe I said it wrong. But I always said, Peter said then, this is that. Yes. And if this isn't that, I want to keep this to that coming. Amen. I, 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 I believe this is that all. Because it took a little sinner like me and done something to me. It put a love in my heart that's burning on oh my and I, I, it's been burning for 30 years and it's still burning getting brighter all the time as I go towards that day. Yes, sir. Oh, my. His word. Peter stand there denied him. But just a few days later stood before the whole multitude. Amen. Why? Then he had the intellectual sign. The sword. We had a million more last year. We had so many in our organization. But now he's got something inside. Oh, my. Got the whole armor on. Oh my. 
How wonderful. Go ahead. All right. Oh, God makes himself present in his army then. Do you believe that? Yeah. Now, God said, I sent him the word. He just walked out on the top of it, disbelieved it. I made it manifest, and they crucified it. I'm just getting tired. I'm coming myself. So, here he comes. God in you. God above us. The pillar of fire. God with us. In Jesus Christ. God in us. The Holy Spirit. What is it? The same word. The same God. Amen. No more trusting in anything else. God come himself. This is a man-sized job. So he just brought it all down and come down himself. They won't have to do nothing about it. It doesn't surrender me and I'll walk in them, talk in them, speak in them, work in them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, my. That's it. I'll do the do. I'll do the work. Just let them just humble themselves. Let them just empty up. I'll just beat my enemy out there through them. <laughs> That's it. You can't do it in yourself. Now, you're not a match for them. But if you just let God do it, <laughs> get the word in you, then it'll be all be taken care of. Now, God fortified his army, what with himself, in the form of prophets, apostles, teachers, pastors. What do you do? What was God doing? Listen, did you ever think what that offices of the church is? It's God's dress. Inside dress. An apostle, a prophet, a seer. Foreseen it before Satan ever gets to it. Done told it. <laughs> what is it? God dressed up in his church. These offices is God's dress wear. When you see those offices, pastors, teachers, evangelists, what is that? That's God's dress wear. God's presence. God's spirit in a working through man. And if that office denies any of this word, then it's not God dressing. Amen. 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 That's that wolf in sheep's clothing. Amen. That's that fellow. Amen. Amen. Beware of him. Yeah. But when he just takes what the word says, remember that's God because he's speaking his word. Yeah. But if it says, well, it isn't. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> get going, sheep. Get going. Amen. All right. What did he do that for? Now the world wouldn't be that man rules again. They didn't believe it in the first place. They said, well, well they, they, they stole him away. His disciples come stole him away. Yes. So they didn't believe it. They seen that. And God said, now, wait a minute. I'm going to come and be in it myself. I'm going to meet my enemy in the church. I'm going to beat him on his own grounds. <laughs> he did that once. Yeah. You know what he did? He took Moses and said, My right arm of the enemy's nose, and let the enemy feed him and raise him up right like that. Went down and feed the enemy and sunk him in the bottom of the dead sea. That's right. Sure it is. Then if they all infinite God, what do we got to worry about? Amen. He's God. Just, just go ahead and believe him. Sure. Now, he said he would what he would do? He would come and vindicate himself in his church, and they would vindicate his resurrection by his works. See? Yeah, John 14, 12. I think that's right. Yeah, John 14, 12. Jesus said, He that believeth in me, the works that I do, shall he also. See? What is it? Now you say, I believe. That's just a word. But if you truly believe, that's this. If he is the word, then you've got to believe all the word. He that believeth all of me, just don't believe part of it, believe all of me, then the works that I do, shall he do also. For he is still the same word. So if it's the same word, it would do the same works. If this Holy Spirit that's here today, if it isn't the same word that it was in the beginning, if it is, it'll do the same works. That's the reason Jesus said, He that believeth in me the works that I do shall he do also. Oh, I'd like to stay on that a little while, but get too late. Why? The same word, same works. See? Because Jesus was God's works. We know that. Matthew 28 said, I'll be with my army. Not only that, but I'm going in my army. Oh, my. Think of it. Our great warrior, great triumph, word general in us. The word who was made flesh and triumphed over every devil. Every sickness, even death, hell, in the grave. Amen. That same general 
is in us. With us. How long? To the end of the world. Right on down. Think of it. The one that's leading the battle. <laughs> Every power of the enemy is defeated. When he sure on earth, he took the word and triumphed over everything Satan had. He triumphed over death. He triumphed over hell. He triumphed over the grave. He rose up on the third day. And he come back and now living in his church. This great word. Warrior. The warrior that was the word. And that same warrior that is the word is in us. Amen. Living himself, punctuating every sign of his resurrection and his coming. Amen. 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 Doing it today in this evening time Amen. when the great evening lights shall begin to shine. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This great warrior, Christ, already trying. The a thing for me to do this follow. Yes. Amen. 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 Mm. Amen. Every power defeated. Dodging a lot of scriptures here. I like that. I think of that one time here a few years ago down in Jeffersonville, the foul oil company caught a fire. And we got a bunch of little fire engines down there, and they come around and look like a kid with a hose out in the yard. The fire chief was running around there, you know, saying, um, uh, sprinkle a little bit of here. Chewing on that cigar like a dehorned Texas steer. Going around, sprinkle a little over here. And all the firemen running around pulling a hose. Yes, sir, your honor, sir. <laughs> Fire burning right on, burning right on down. That's why they call Louisville. Across the bridge came the big fire engine. No more and they stopped. They had a folding ladder. Who was standing before the ladder started? The chief was on the front. When the ladder went up, the chief was at the top. When he got to the window, he just down here, spurt a little water here, spurt a little water there. What do you do? He took the axe and throw it to the window and said, Come on, boys! Hallelujah! Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm cheating! Hallelujah! He led the way to death, hell, and the grave and said, Come on, boys! Some kind of a creed! Come on, come on! He leads the way. Hallelujah! A few minutes the fire was out. Let him break the windows and walls of your creeds down and come in one time. All the superstitions and devils of fire. Glory. Things will change. We made no great intellectual giants. We just follow the chief. <laughs> She'd come right down, took the word of God, and broke right to it and said, Here you are! You know, I'm told that a jet plane had to go so fast, it gets to the sound barrier. And then it just has to quiver and shake until it gets to that sound barrier. And after it gets to there, she just runs free. Oh, that's what it is, brother. You just die out to everything until <laughs> you get through the sin barrier. That's the unbelief. Get through that and everything will run fine when you take God out of his word. You can shake every devil away from you and run through. Amen. Put on the full armor. Yes, sir. The chief is leading. Leading us home. Amen. Come on. In my father's house are many mansions. Amen. It wasn't so I told you. I'll not leave you comfortless. I'll come again and be with you. Even in you to the end of the world. The works that I do shall you do also. A little while the world see me no more yet. You shall see me. For I'll be with you even in you to the end of the world. Chief, leading on. Amen. My Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is follow. Amen. Amen. Tramp, tramp, tramping of the army. Marching on to victory. Amen. Not paying any attention to all this unbelief and old crows and buzzards howling around here. We're eagles. Let's soar out of everything. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Here some time ago, in the army, when a nation first provided a helmet, oh my, that little rookie didn't want to wear that. It seemed unnecessary. But when he got in battle, he needed it. God don't provide anything unless he has need of it. Everything that he provides for, you better take it. Of course, you're going to have need of it. A little rookie with a 90-pound pack on his back in a training. He's got his new suit on. You know, he don't see any necessary packing that 90-pound pack with all these picks and shovels and hand grenades and everything else. But let him get in battle on us. 
Time will come when you must have it. That's right. That's why the all-wise God equipped his army with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He knows these intellectual giants that stand in this last days. Hallelujah. He knows they stand. And they'll be able to explain by their great wisdom powers of Satan. Peter said they're like a roaring lion. Divine what he will. Yes. But he said, I'm not going to leave you come to this. I'm coming again. I'm going to be with you. He equipped his army with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. He said, go up there, every one of you, and wait. Luke 24, 49. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but carry in the city of Jerusalem until... Amen. Until you're in due with power from on high. After this, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and then you shall be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea. Acts 1, 8. Come on down to the utmost parts of the world. When the Holy Ghost fell and the fire began to fall upon them, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost out in the streets. They all run together and said, What meaneth all of this here? Why do we hear every man in our own language wherein we were born? Went ahead and called the different languages they were speaking. And others mocked said, These are full of new wine. But Peter stood up in the midst of them and said, You men of Jerusalem, you that dwell in Judea, let this be known you and hearken my word. These are not drunk like you suppose it is. What's only, what's only the third hour of the day, nine o'clock in the morning. Saloons ain't even open yet. See? This is it. Yes, sir. This is not that, but this is that which is spoken of by the prophet Joel coming back to that word. And he hewed it and he cut it from side to side. Amen. And then elders just picked their heart and said, Man and brethren, what can we do? He said, Repent, every one of you. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. By the promises of you and your children, of them as far off even as many as the Lord our God shall come. Hallelujah. All right. All right. There's the pattern. Amen. That's what he said, dude. All at once to see if it's right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yes, sir. I like that. Because it's a promise. In the Old Testament, when the man fell, the first man that fell, God told him to go out there and get an omer full of that. Omer's full. And put it in the Holy of Holies. If he tried to keep it over, it's got uh, little termites, wiggle tails in it. You know what little wiggle tails we call them down south there? They get the sister and everything, you know, and little, little bugs. That's what's matters so many people's experience. <laughs> Got some gloves in it, see. <laughs> Trying to keep it over on what you had two years ago. Right, let's get it right now. Amen. That man that fell every night, and that man that was Christ. Amen. See, you can't keep yesterday's experience. Got to have one right now. Amen. Mm-hmm. Try it today. But there was some of it kept back in the holiest of holies, which stayed. He said, all the generations that follow after you, when they become a priest in the priesthood, they could take a bite of the original man that fell at the first. See? Look, now Peter said the same thing. <laughs> he, they said, he said, This is that, this is it. He said, Now repent all of you and be baptized in the name of the Lord of Jesus Christ Amen. for the of your sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promise is unto you. Now we're royal priests. And to your children, the name is far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Everyone will come to the formula, come up and really repent, be baptized, look up to God. He'll give you a, not a mouthful, but a heartful. Uh, not a something, not some emotion or some it's psychology, but the real Holy Ghost, the original. It's better than at Pentecost. Yeah. It's the same thing. Amen. Yes. If you follow the prescription, just like giving medicine. So many doctors today, what if you took a, uh, a druggist and didn't fill out the prescription the way the doctor wrote it? You want to have him? Kill you. That's why we've got so many dead church members. Amen. 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 Glory! Brother, don't tamper with it. That's what the doctor wrote. Just take it the way it is. That's all right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Got too many crack drugs. <laughs> yes, sir. He know what his army needed. That's reason he equipped him with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> they knew that he'd, he'd have to have him. They'd have to have him. Yes, sir. He knew to be an effective witness. They, to witness his resurrection, they have to have the Holy Ghost. Now he said, Mark 16, go into all the world and preach the gospel. In other words, demonstrate the power. And these signs shall follow them that accept the gospel. See? Now just say intellectual words. No, no. They couldn't do that with intellectual words. That word has to be made flesh, manifested. 
Timothy. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, speak with new tongues, take up serpents, drink daily things, lay hands on the Amen. sick, and shall recover. Demonstrate the power of the Holy Ghost. The Word made manifest. These things that I'm telling you will come to pass. Like quickening word. Come to pass. You have the power of the Holy Spirit in you. It's not you. It's the Holy Spirit doing it. See? Now, to be an effective witness of God, you have to have the Holy Ghost. Because without the Holy Ghost, you can't make that live. You know what you'll do? You'll take some intellectual giant's idea about it and bypass it and say that was just for the apostles. Amen. 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 Oh. Amen. There are people almost everywhere whose hearts are all aflame. Oh, with the fire that fell on Pentecost that cleansed and made them clean. Oh, it's burning now within my heart. Oh, glory to his name. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Aren't you glad of that? Amen. Though these people may not learn to be or boast of worldly fame, they have all received their Pentecost, baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. And I'm telling you I'll go far in my right. power is yet the same. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Amen. Oh, I'm glad of that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You'd have to have the Holy Ghost to manifest these evening lights. Right. To make Mark Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever real. That's right. Put on the whole armor of God. Don't use it for a dress or just to parade up and down. But what is it? Put on the whole armor of God. And so that when you've got the armor of God on, you can take the sword of God with faith and cut your way through to any promise that God made you. If sickness stands in your way, cut it out of the way. God promised. If sin stands in your way, cut it out of the way. That's right. The whole armor. If the devil shoots a guard at you, knock it off and keep on cutting. That's right. Hundred Christian soldiers marching out. Going on before. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. One of them. One of them. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Hallelujah. One of them. One of them. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Aren't you glad of that? Amen. Hallelujah. They were gathered in the upper room, all praying in his name. They were baptized with the Holy Ghost, and power for service came. Now, what he did for them that day, he'll do for you the same. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them, one of them, one of them. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Memphis one day, you've heard me tell it, I guess. I just thought of it. I was coming and singing that little song. The airplane had stopped. The storm come up the night before. I was coming from over at Dallas, Texas, and it stopped at Memphis. The storm brought it down. They put me up in the big hotel, told me the next morning they'd call me at 7 o'clock. I was going to mail some mail real early, about 5 o'clock. I didn't sleep too much. On the road down, the Holy Spirit said, turn and go back the other way. I walked a little farther, and there's some reels and guns and things sitting in the shop. Big old Irish cop standing there. I walked over this reels and looked up and down. I thought, he quit looking at me. I said, Lord, is that you? Don't you please, sons of God, are led to the Spirit of God. Amen. I said, turn and go back the other way. I just started and went back. And I went across and went way down south of Memphis there. Got amongst where the colored people live. And I was going along there. I thought, my, I looked at my watch. The time was plain to leave. Something just kept saying, going on. Sun was up big, you know. I was going along there. And directly I looked, hanging out over a little gate. And there stood a typical colored sister. Looked like one of these angel mamas. Her big fat cheeks hanging there. Tears was running down her cheeks. and said, good morning, parson. I said, good morning. I said, Auntie, how did you know I was a parson? Now, down in the south, that's what a minister's called. I said, how did you know I was a parson? She said, ah... Oh, I knew you was. There'd be one thing I just missed. Said, you said, you were supposed to have on a little gray suit and a little hat put on the side of your head. Said, but where's that briefcase you had? I just said it. I said, it left it in the hotel. She said, I knowed you was coming. I said, my name's Branham. Did you know? I said, no, sir. I said, Branham, I don't know you. 
She said, but did you ever hear in the Bible about that Shunammite woman? I said, yes. She said, you know, she, um, she uh, had a baby. She's too old to have a baby, and yet she had one. And said, said, uh, Elijah, that prophet, went and told her about that baby because she was kind to this prophet. I said, yes, I know the story very well, Andy. She said, well, I was that kind of woman. And she said, I prayed to the Lord, me and my husband, to give us a child. I said, I'd raise him like she did. And said, he gave us a fine boy. And said, but my boy took the wrong road. Said he got out amongst sinners and so forth and went the way of the sin and said, he's laying in there dying. He caught a venereal disease and said, he's in there dying and said, we didn't know it. We Christians here and said, it went so long till it turned into a syphilitic and said, he's, a, he's dying and said, the doctor had come and said, if they couldn't do enough for him, his blood was four plus and they'd give him a uh, silver sand, six off six and mercury and everything. He didn't do no good. And it was, it was too far advanced, not even holes in his heart and said, he's dying. And she said, I just couldn't, Parson, stand to see my baby die. Said his father went on to work this morning. We said all night long I was up, and I prayed. I said, Lord God, said you're the same God was back in the days of Elijah. And said now I, I, I was the kind of woman she was, and you give me my baby here. And said he's took the wrong road, Lord. But I've washed over board and tried to serve you, and went to your church and listened to your parsons, and said I I tried and done everything I was told to do. She said. I don't want to see my baby die like that. She said, it, and I said, Lord, what can I do? He said, I fell asleep and I dreamed I seen you coming down the street. And when I woke up, he said, go out there and stand at the gate. And her back was still wet. She had a, a man's shirt tied around her head. And it, I looked down there. I looked at her. Oh, my. She said, won't you come in? Oh, my. I opened that old gate back with a little plow horn hanging there for gate weights. You know what they are. And it went on the inside. I've been in King's Palace, you know, but never was I any more welcome. I was in that little colored house that morning. Right. Little old floor, no, that little iron bed stood there. <laughs> Poor, but laying on the bed was a great big fine looking boy. Looked to be about 190 pounds, just strong and husky. He had the sheet in his hand or the little thing over going, mm, mm, mm. I said, good morning, sir. Oh, she said, Parson, he hasn't known that for three or four days. So he, he, thinks, says, he thinks he's out in the ocean or some big place that he's, he's caught by being dark and he's in a boat and he can't find his way back. He says, that's what breaks my heart. So said, I, if I could just hear him say he was saved. I said, Auntie, I pray for the sick. She wasn't interested in that. She wants to see that boy saved. That's what she wants to see. That boy saved. She knows she'd see him again on the other side then. She said, now he's tucked the wrong road. Won't you pray for him? I said, well, let's pray. I said, oh, let's pray. So we got out. I said, Auntie, you pray first. Oh, my. When that dear old saint went to pray, and you, it wasn't something new with her. She talked to him like she talked to him before. She, yes, she, I just felt chills run all over me like that. I thought, oh, God, how did you ever leave me down here like this? I thought, oh, God, you're so wonderful. I watched her, I raised up and watched her. She had tears run down. She said, Lord, here I am. She said, I, I, I prayed, and you gave me a dream and said, this parson was coming. And I waited right there. I believe God works on both ends of the line. That's why I couldn't go around. So now I waited right here till he come. And so now here he is. So Lord, if I can just hear my baby say, I, I'm saved. So that it'll be all right. And she prayed and then she stopped praying and said, Amen. She said, would you pray, Parson? I said, yes, ma'am, sister. I put my hands over on his feet cold. She raised over and wiped the tears off her cheeks like that. She kissed him on the cheek. No matter if he's in disgrace. She said, Mama's baby. Now see... Uh, that, no matter what he was, it's still her baby. No matter, see, that's it. You think of a mother's love. Now, but God said a mother might forget her baby, but I can't forget you. Yes. Your name's engraved on the palms of my hands. He loves you. Don't worry. If you're taking his word, just keep on. She knelt back down. I put my hands on his feet. He kept saying, mm, mm, it's dark in here. Mm, mm. Dark in here, oh mama. I said, Can't you talk to him? He said, no, he don't know where he's at. Said, he's just been going like that for days. I said, Heavenly Father, I don't understand. But while that plane come down, now I'm too late, I won't catch it. And here, you had me come down this way, and this sister standing out here, this little humble house. I come here, just to, I don't know why I'm here, Lord. I just kept on following. He said, Oh mama. Oh mama. I said, I listened a little bit. She said, yes, honey. The mama is getting light in the room. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> about a year after that, I was going through Phoenix. 
I come on a train. You know how sandwiches are on a train? They're so high and little bitty things. So we pulled into Memphis and I jumped off getting a sack full of hamburgers. And the last week I got about the Phoenix. And so we'd be that day and that night. And I could get them there for about 15 cents a piece. You know, and I'd go get me a sack full of hamburgers. And I went to get me run down like I heard somebody. Hello there, Boston Brandon. I looked over at a little red cap standing over there. I said, hello there. How are you, brother? Kept on. He said, wait a minute. I said, but don't you know me? And I said, no, I don't believe I do, brother. He said, do you remember one time? He said, uh, you come down to my house and said, my mama would stand out that gate waiting down there over here and stop. I said, you're not that boy. He said, yes, I am. <laughs> he said, I, 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 I was healed. He said, the, 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 the doctor done said, I was well. And said, oh, that, but I'm saved now. <laughs> what is it? Listen, friend. God works on both ends of the line. That same God who could say to that woman at Shunammite, the same God who could speak and say to that woman at the well, go get your husband. That same woman could touch his garment to turn him around and not miss that people. He's God. Let me show you something. I have, I've noticed some colored people back here in the back of leaving two or three brothers sitting here. I don't say this now. See, but look, any grace of God, not to the potentates and monarchs, but to a poor, illiterate colored woman. Living in a little haunt down there. The grace of God that could hold that plane down there. And listen, after I left that house, I went out and called a cab to go back. I was about two and a half hours late. And I said, drive me on over to the cab station, uh, from cab, not cab station, but airport. I said, I've got to catch a plane when I can. Now, I was back there right after the war, and you couldn't hardly get a plane. When I walked in, got inside, said, last call, Louisville, Kentucky. <laughs> well, I said, God, for the faith of that woman... That maybe didn't know her ABCs. Yes, she know her ABCs. Always believe Christ. <laughs> For that woman, poor, illiterate woman, hardly know where the next needle was coming from, but her sincerity to the God that she loved to ground that plane and hold that plane. So the prayer of faith was prayed over her, boy. And you could take a man, move him so I couldn't go up the plane. And the Spirit of God turning you around. No matter how you try to go, it turns you back. You get God in you, brother. You can't walk that other road. Something turns you around. Help oh, that plane there for that. That's the same God that's in this building, man. You believe it? Amen. Put on the full armor of God. You believe him? Amen. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Christians in here, raise your hand. Then say this, I'll never Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. The bride tree. Amen. Come up at Pentecost. There's a tree that David saw. It's planted with a river of waters. One river, the Holy Spirit. All these waters flowing into gifts, spiritual gifts. Flowing into it. Its leaves can't wither. It'll bring forth its fruit. Is that right? Amen. Remember. It'll bring forth its fruit in its season. That perfect tree, Christ, came. And when he came, what happened? They cut him down. 
and put him over. Maybe I missed. Here, I got something here, Ben. I think it right here, brother. Um, they cut him down, hung him on a Roman tree, but he raised up again. That's right. He's here today. That's right. When he was here on earth, he stood and looked out upon the audience. A little woman passed by one day when he was going to a crowd of people. They said the, the doctors of that day, the philosophers and, and priests said, he's a telepathist, he's Beelzebub, a fortune teller. They still live. The Spirit does. But the Spirit of God still lives too. <laughs> he's coming for his bride. The works that I do shall you also. How many people here are sick that don't know me and know what I don't know nothing about you? Raise up your hand. All around everywhere. Just everywhere. If this comes to a person from Jeffersonville or somebody that I know, forget it. Get away from it. Hold your hand up and say no. Get away. I haven't had... I just feel this presence. I know he's here. Listen. Je- Jesus said, as it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Okay. What was it? A time like in Sodom. Look at perversion like it was in Sodom, the sin of Sodom. Look at this nation. Look at other nations. I was reading a newspaper here some time ago in Los Angeles. It's increased 40% last year. Sodomite. Why women has exposed themselves and such to the natural source of man's been changed. Sodomite. Was the days of Sodom. Look, when Lot, the righteous man, and his family was down there, he become mayor of the city or set in the gate and the judge. Great intellectual. But the sins vexed his righteous soul each day. One day just before the end time, Abraham, the elected church, was called out. It didn't go in Sodom. It was out of Sodom. I watch the three classes of people always. There's always a believer, a make-believer, and an unbeliever amongst the people. That's Abraham, Lot, and the Sodomite. I watch each had a message. There's three angels came to Abraham, the church elected. Two of them went down to Sodom and brought out Lot and his wife and daughters. She turned around. Sodomites burned. Two of them, a modern Billy Graham and Oral Roberts. His messages went out into Sodom, preaching the word, blinding him with the word. Did this believe the word? You are blind. The word, preaching of the gospel blinds the unbeliever. And that's what Billy Graham and those great evangelists are doing, blinding. But there was one that stayed with Abraham, the elect. He gave him a sign. You remember, he had been Abram a day before that or two. Sarah had been S-A-R-R-A. But now it's A-B-R-H-A-M and S-A-R-A-H. So this one sitting there, the speaker, he said, uh, Abraham, where is your wife, Sarah, princess? He said, she's in the tent, and the tent was behind the angel. He said, Abraham, I remember Sarah was 90 and Abraham 100, 99. He said, I'm going to visit you. I, personal pronoun there, I'm going to visit you according to the time of life, the promise that I told you. In other words, Sarah's going to bring this baby. And she laughed in the tent. See, she's old. She said, me have pleasure with my Lord, Abraham, her husband. And said, he's old too. Why, she says, as husband and wife, maybe they had not been husband and wife for 20 years. See, is that old. It's past. Said, me. And she laughed. And the angel with his back turned. Said, why did Sarah laugh? What about, is that telepathy? <laughs> why did Sarah laugh? Sarah ran out and said, I didn't. Of course, she's scared. He said, yes, you did. She'd have perished right there if it wouldn't have been for Abraham, her husband. She's a part of it. And the church would perish right now if it wasn't a part of Christ. For some reason, can't do it. He can't take Sarah on account of Abraham. He can't take the church on account of Christ. The blood's still there. That's right, it's part of it. Now, notice, Jesus, and watch what he called this man. Lot, uh, Lot, them angels led Lot out. Watch, Abraham went out to worship for this angel, and he called him Elohim. What was it? That man eat a veal chops, a lamb, or a, a calf, and he drank milk, and eat bread, probably cornmeal, and made the whole cakes out on the herd that Sarah made. And he eat bread, drink milk from the cow, and eat the cow's calf. 
That's right. And standing there, Abraham, and Abraham called him Elohim. He ought to know. <laughs> He's one talk to him. <laughs> See if that isn't right. Elohim. Capital L O R D, same as the beginning. What was it? Jesus said, as it was the days of Lot, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Elohim, the Word, Amen. in the beginning, will be manifested in human flesh like it was there. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Elohim. Not I was, I am. Amen. He's here tonight. Yes. Same way. You believe it? Amen. Will you believe Amen. it? Amen. If somebody in this building... I know not. If the Holy Spirit, if you will just, how many believe that that woman touched Jesus, not physically, but her faith touched him? Yeah. Well, that yeah. knee, uh, garment, sure. Blind Barnaby, it's the same thing. See, your face stopped him. Yeah. I want to preach for a Then Jesus stood still. <laughs> and now, if the Lord willing, this big garment, Palestinian garment, she pressed through this little weak woman and touched his garment. She said, if I can do it. All of a sudden, a rabbi, a prophet, a deceiver, whatever more this calling, you know, mixed multitude. So he's going along there, and he said, stop, said, who touched me? Who touched me? He said, somebody touched me. He said, oh, everybody's touched you. Peter rebuked him. He said, my, a man of your caliber and say, who touched me? He said, but I perceived that I got weak. Virtue went from me. He looked over the crowd, and he found the, the little woman. And he said, thy faith has saved thee. Now, the Bible said in the book of Hebrews that Jesus Christ, right now, is a high priest. All right? Amen. That can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. Is that right? Amen. A high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. How would he act if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever? Act the same way he did then. If he's the same high priest. The Bible said he's the same. Do you believe it? Amen. Well, then you can't bypass the Word. The Word said so. Now, have we? Have you enough faith to touch Him? If you can touch Him, then I'll yield myself to Him. And let Him use me and use you to bring faith to the rest of the audience. That's a challenge, isn't it? Amen. You believe it? Yes. Do you believe it? Would you would it strengthen your faith to see that Elohim, not you, not me, but Him. Amen. What is it? The Word. What is it? The protection, the armament, the armor of God, the Word of God, made manifest in human flesh. Your flesh, my flesh, to see the works of God. Amen. I believe it. Heavenly Father, maybe I did wrong. Maybe I made a wrong challenge. If I have, Lord, you forgive me. I didn't mean to do it. But it seems like it's something needs me to do it. And if that's you, Father, which I'm sure it is, Make yourself known. So the people know these things that I speak, being yet uneducated, yet they're true. They're your words. Hear that? Remember when the army was coming up one time, and the Spirit of God fell upon a man and told him how to how to go down there and set in the way, and how they would beat that army, and they did it. All I believe was David was it was one of them, and the Spirit fell upon one of the men and told him how to escape. Hear what that said? This Jesus goes, seek me. He is the Word. Stay with the Word. The Word promises it. Now, what am I trying to do? Take God to His Word. I don't. I know some of you people here, but you pray. If it comes over any of you people that I know, please, the people from Jeffersonville and around that I know, don't pray. Just let it go this time. Let it be people that I don't know. See, you just pray for me. I need you. Just a moment. Quicker he comes. Your Reverend, there's a little lady sitting over here to my right. Got a handkerchief up to her mouth. We're strangers to one another, I suppose. I don't know you. He knows you. 
All right, there's a woman that's in contact with God that I don't know. She don't know me and I don't know her. But the Holy Spirit knows us both. Now, you was praying for something. If the Holy Spirit would reveal to me what you were praying for, like you did to the woman, my blush is you see. Would you believe you'd be free? It's a spiritual problem that's bothering you. Isn't that right? If it is, weighs up that hand. Mm-hmm. It won't bother you no more. You believe God knows who you are? Would that help you? Mildred Rose. <laughs> Have faith in God. If you just believe. You're not from here even. You're from South Carolina. <laughs> it's true. Just have faith. Don't doubt. I struck the lady sitting right behind her. She also is a stranger to me. But God knows both of us. You're in trouble. There's a dark shadow over the woman. I don't know her. She's a stranger. The next lady said, your hands up like this. Say yes. Mm-hmm. You believe God can reveal to me what your trouble is? Would you believe me to be his prophet or his servant? You would? Yours is a nervous condition. That's right. That's right. Raise up your hand. It won't bother you no more now. Your faith has saved you. You are from this country. You're from a place called Fayetteville. That's right. You believe me to be his prophet? You believe God can tell me who you are? Mrs. Harrison, then you can go home and be made well. You believe? Here sits a lady sitting right here looking at me. I'm a stranger to this woman. You're a stranger to me, sister? All right. You believe me as his prophet or his uh, servant? You believe it? If God will reveal to me what's your trouble, do you believe with all your heart? You have lots of things wrong with you. You have high blood pressure for one thing. You have heart trouble for another thing. You're almost in a nervous breakdown for another. And you're praying to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That is true. If that's right, raise up your hand. Sir. You believe God knows you? All right, sir. Miss Jackson? Only right. made well. There's such a little lady sitting up here crying. She's kind of heavy set. Got her hair done up like this and wearing a white dress. Sitting right up there. I'm a stranger. You're praying for something. That's right. The little lady there. I'm a stranger to you. I don't know you. God knows you. You believe me to be his seer or his uh, servant? You believe that with all your heart? You want to go back to Charlotte and be made well? Hmm? Mrs. Hines? And you're wanting a baby, aren't you? You believe it with all your heart? You can have your baby. Right? You believe it with all your heart? How many of you believe? One of them. One of them. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Don't, are you glad of it? Oh, my. What is it? The Holy Spirit. It's here with you. There it is again. That's, that's just believe. Take hold of one another's hands. Take hold, make a contact. Hold one another's hands. Just so that you'll know that the Holy Spirit's here. Now listen, friends. There's not a person in here that's got any spiritual understanding but what knows now that a little strange feeling's going through you. What is that? That's the Word of God. That's God in the form of Spirit, the Word. The Word, God fortifying you, you see. Don't disbelieve now. Believe. I seen a man just heal back there with prostrate trouble. God bless you, brother. It's all diabetes, that lady. Forget about it. Go on. You're well. That's just going everywhere all over the building. You believe? Now, the Bible said, listen, the same Bible promised this the works that I do shall do also. This is what he did. Well, the same Bible says this, that if they, these signs shall follow them that believe, if they lay their hands, you are all believers, you got your hands on one another, if they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Heavenly Father, we know that Satan is defeated. Our great chief captain, Jesus Christ, is present. Here's his word made manifest. It's made manifest by the presence of the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost working in us. The same Holy Ghost who brought us down Pentecostal fire. 
brought us down Pentecostal tongues, brought us down Pentecostal interpretation, as said in the church, apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, and you hear this big convention going on, where teachers, evangelists, and gifts are operating everywhere. We see you, Lord. We know we're at the end time, and the people need strength. Satan is charging at them. And I'm putting the Word of God in their hands right now, in their hearts. We defeat Satan with this Word. Come out of these people. In the name of Jesus Christ, look at their hands. Look at their hands. Satan, you're defeated. Leave them in Jesus' name. Come out. Hey. And you're me by the living God. Hey. Oh. I love him. he jump back, he'd get little and the devil would get bigger. And every time he hollered, boop, he jumped back and the devil would get bigger. And he knew he had to fight him. So he thought, I got to find a chair or something. He found a Bible and the devil went, boop, he went, boop, right back. And the devil got littler. He went, boop, 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 boop. And knocked him on down. That's the thing that might get the word of God. When he always boop, you holler, boop. When he said, your six has written. By stripes, I am I feel religious. Amen. Ain't even midnight yet. Amen. 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 One of them, one of them. I'm so glad that I can say one of them. Brothers, seek this blessing that will cleanse your heart from sin, that will start the joy bells ringing and will keep your soul aflame. Oh, it's burning now down in my heart. Glory to his name. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. I'm one of them. One of them. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. One of them. 